Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. What a pleasure to be here today. It is a good day, isn't it? First to Westchester Community College, it's a great to be back. Let's give them a big round of applause for their hospitality and the service they do. President Miles, to your congressperson, Nita Lowy, our mistress of ceremonies today, who was just a superstar, has always been a superstar, a role model for so many of us. She was very kind in her introduction. It's not the way she normally talks to me. <laughs> she normally calls up. Says, Andrew, you have to do this today. I say, yes, Nita, yes, Nita, yes, Nita. <laughs> Nita worked with my father, so I don't mess around with Nita. And Nita has delivered time and time again. I worked hard to build the Tappan Zee Bridge, but Nita Lowy got the money to fund the Tappan Zee Bridge. <laughs> To the next county executive, George Latimer, let's give him a round of applause. And to all the elected officials and the dignitaries. I am a resident of Westchester County, and I have to tell you, it feels a lot better to say Westchester is my home county now. It is a beautiful place. I raised three beautiful daughters here. Uh, I've enjoyed it thoroughly, but I think I'm going to enjoy it a little bit more under <laughs> County Executive George Latimer, don't you think? <laughs> and you're right, the organizing effort around the campaign was phenomenal. Uh, and there's a lesson. Don't forget what you accomplished here. Uh, it shows what team can do when we put aside all the differences and all the pettiness and we come together and we say we focus on one goal because uh, George Latimer's win was not just a win. It was a resounding statement by the people of this county and you made it happen. And congratulations. <laughs> It also is a statement of political times, as the other speakers have mentioned. Uh, don't be surprised when government assaults people's rights if people get upset and people move to defend themselves. Because that's what this has been. This is an assault on people's rights, on every level and in every group. You know, there are different levels of, of concern about government. Congressman Engel mentioned during Richard Nixon, that was a time of concern. Uh, relevant in my lifetime during the Reagan years, it was a time of concern because there was a different philosophy and there was a different set of priorities and they were trying to reorder society and reorder people's rights. Those situations pale in comparison to what this administration is trying to do. I mean, just think about it. This is not just about politics. They're making statements about who we are as a people, who we are as a society, what our character consists of, how we treat one another. They're trying to take decades of progress in civil rights and in human rights and roll it all back. They want to roll back a woman's right to choose. They want to roll back the way we treat women with respect and dignity and equality. They want to roll back LGBTQ rights. They want to roll back environmental protections. They want to roll back health care for the poor. They want to roll back our gun safety laws all across the board. And that's why we're so blessed to have the congressional delegation we have 
with Elliot Engel and Nita Lowy, and let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> they have assaulted the state of New York. They have assaulted the state of New York. That federal tax bill doesn't say all 50 states will be treated like this. The federal tax bill says Democratic states will be treated like this, and Republican states will be treated like this. What the tax bill did is it targets the Democratic states to serve as a piggy bank to f fund the tax cut in the red states. The state and local issue, loss of deductibility, hurts New York, hurts California, hurts 12 other states. Conveniently, all Democratic states. It takes $18 billion from the state of New York. On top of the $48 billion that the federal government already takes from the state of New York. State of New York, God bless Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan. He used to make this point over and over and over. Eventually, it sunk into my skull, so we, which means he was really persuasive. New York State is the number one donor state in the nation, meaning we send more money to Washington than we get back, and there is no state in the nation that gives more money to Washington and gets back less than the state of New York, and that's why to steal another $18 billion from New York under the state and local deduction is really reprehensible. It is so bad that our Attorney General had to leave here. You know why? <laughs> he had to leave because he is suing the federal government for what they're doing to the state of New York. And this is not a partisan issue, or it should not be a partisan issue. I said to my colleagues on both sides of the aisle when I did the State of the State, I don't care if you're a Democrat or you're a Republican. You are a New Yorker first and act that way. And this is a bill that is bad for New York, so you should stand up and say, I'm against this. Because you don't put party above the people who you represent. That was the oath that you took. And in the meantime, in the meantime, it is going to place a tremendous pressure on local governments. Westchester County has one of the highest property taxes in the United States of America. <laughs> you know, I know, and not as governor, but as a taxpayer. <laughs> We've been talking about it for years. What this bill does, this tax bill, it says you can't deduct that amount of money that essentially raises property taxes 25%. Just think about it. If we don't handle this well, it could have devastating effects in Westchester County and other high tax counties. It could affect home values. You could see a whole transformation. So this is probably one of the most important times in history for government, both from a principal point of view and from a practical point of view. We have to fight in Washington on the statement of who we are as a people and principles and values and how we treat each other. And here at home, we have to make sure we handle the state and local deductibility issue and it doesn't have a practical negative effect on our home community. So it requires all of us, from the federal officials to the state officials to the county executive, to deal with this time because this is going to be a crucial uh, and transformative time for the state. Now, on George Latimer, I want to tell you a little secret, but you can't tell anyone else. <laughs> so George Latimer, when he started this race, it was a long shot race. I called up George Latimer and I said, uh, I'd like you to come over to the mansion and we have a cup of coffee. Now, no good ever comes from coming over to the mansion and have a cup of coffee. <laughs> it sounds innocent enough. 
that's just a cup of coffee. But uh, when you're the governor, you're the one who has to have the tough conversations. So come over for a cup of coffee is uh, meaning we have to have a, a important but difficult conversation. Uh, and George came over and we sat down and uh, we talked about what was going on. And I said, you know, someone has to run for county executive of Westchester County. And it's a very important race. Uh, and it's a race we can win if we do it right. But it is a very hard race. And George said nicely, hard. More than hard. <laughs> the opponent has millions of dollars in the bank. He's an incumbent. He's way up uh, in polls. This is all uphill. I said, good point. <laughs> but sometimes it's about a bigger issue than us. And sometimes we do things for the cause and for the mission. Sometimes someone has to be the first one up the hill. And I know there's a machine gunner at the top of the hill, but somebody's got to go first. And George uh, was the talent of the field, in my opinion. And George had the courage. You know, politics, like any other occupation, courage is hard to find. Courage, when you're putting your professional career on the line, is hard to find. Courage, when you may be embarrassed publicly is hard to find. Losing a political race is not easy. I know I've done it. There's no secrecy about it. Everybody knows you lost. Wherever you go, they know you lost. You go to the diner, they know you lost. You know the, go to the gas station filling up your car with gas. The person on the other side of the pump, they know you, you lost. You're a loser, and everybody knows it. So it's not easy. But we talked it through. George said he would think about it. You heard the congressman say when he started, everybody said, what are you crazy? You can't do this. George knew the odds, but he knew it was important to start to make the statement and to articulate the case and for people to understand what this is all about. And he had the personal courage to do it. And in this occupation, Courage is the number one qualification, in my opinion. Second, he's something else. The Attorney General mentioned that I use the term progressive pragmatism. I was getting ready for the state of the state. I lost my father th three years ago, January 1. So every January 1, a lot of memories come flooding back. Why did he die on January 1? because he was failing through November and December. And I had been saying to him through November, November and December, you know, uh, Thanksgiving is coming up and you can't leave before Thanksgiving. We're all together and it's Thanksgiving and that'd be terrible. You wouldn't do that. <laughs> and we get past Thanksgiving and then Christmas is coming. I said, oh, Christmas, the whole family's coming for Christmas. But my father was a very prideful man, and he had reached a point in life where he needed a lot of assistance just to do daily basic functions. Uh, and his quality of life had deteriorated where, you know, it was not who he was. Uh, it was not who he wanted to be. So selfishly, I was arguing, and I said, well, Dad, Christmas, you can't leave before Christmas. Kids, gifts, grandchildren. He said, okay, Christmas. After Christmas, I needed another excuse. I said, Dad, I get inaugurated January 1st. It was my inauguration to my second term. 
I said, I need your help on that speech. I need you here. He said, you don't need me on the speech. You never listen to me anyway. That's why I'm here. But I said, you have to be here for the inauguration. And he wouldn't answer me. And I said, you have to tell me you're going to be here for the inauguration. And he wouldn't answer. I went, went back the next day. And I said, I want the answer on the inauguration. He said, and he was always very careful with his words, my father. I will be here for your inauguration, period. I said, OK. The morning of the inauguration, January 1st, I went by. I said, do you want to come? He said, no, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to listen to it. Your sister's going to go with her phone, cell phone. I went to the inauguration. He heard the inaugural speech on the cell phone, and he passed away right after the inauguration. Uh, so, I think about him every January 1, and even the way he left was such a powerful statement. But I was reading through his works. He de described himself as a progressive, I'm sorry, pragmatic progressive. Pragmatic progressive. Only my father would use terms like that where you need a dictionary to figure out exactly what he was saying. <laughs> but he was putting two concepts together. Everybody now is a progressive. You ask any Democrat, who are you? What are you? Oh, well, I'm a progressive. I'm a progressive. Yeah, great. What the heck does that mean, a progressive? It means I don't want to say liberal, so I say progressive. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Besides that, what does it mean? And my father wanted to say, we need more of a definition of your, your leadership than just progressive. Pragmatic progressive. Meaning, a progressive person in ideology, but a person who gets something done. Because his big point was, we lose people when you are in, in, unable to affect their lives. And they're tired of hearing speeches about how progressive people are, and nothing changing. They want change. They want results. FDR's definition, real change for real people, real time. Make a difference in my life. I don't want the theory. I don't want the speech. I don't want the press release. Keep the press release. Do something that makes a difference in my life. That was progressive pragmatics or pragmatic progressive. That's George Latimer. That's George Latimer. Evidence first. Ideology second. Politicians talk. They talk, they talk, they talk. My grandfather, Andrea, my father's father, when he wasn't watching and a politician would come on, my grandfather would go. <laughs> they talk. We should do this. We should do this. We should do this. That's great. Do something. George Latimer. He is a visionary, but he's a manager. He's a dreamer, but he's a doer. And he's going to make this county practically, tangibly, a better county. You put courage, together with a progressive ideology, together with the pragmatic ability, because he's a professional at government. He's done it on every level. He knows it. He knows how to make it work. And he's got the guts to do it. George Latimer is exactly the right man for this time. I am honored that he is going to be my partner in helping the people of Westchester County. And now, so we can get George Latimer to work. I would call up George Latimer. Robin, please come up. Hilda Pongello, George's sister, Ron Pongello. George's brother-in-law, James Pongello, George's nephew. So I ad may administer the oath of office.
left hand on the Bible. Raise your right hand, please, and repeat after me. I, George Latimer, I, George Latimer, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the State of New York, that I will support the Constitution of the State of New York, the Charter and the laws of the County of Westchester, the Charter and the laws of the County of Westchester, and I will perform the duties of Westchester County Executive. To the best of my ability, the best of my ability. So, help so help me God. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much.